Hello and welcome to Jesse James Beads. How are you doing today? I do hope that you've had a good day so far. I understand it's quite early for some of you, but over here in Blighty it's 5pm. What have you been up to today? How's the weather where you are? What are you having for tea? Let's have a bit of a chat whilst we're waiting for everybody to join us. While we're waiting, I would love to show you what we're going to be creating on today's live, which is a special extra for the mm, burr amongst you, which is the magical mystery monthly bid box thingy. I've forgotten what the letters actually stand for. So there we go. Let's have a look at what we are going to make. Easily accessible to people unfamiliar with wire work beautiful beautiful dragonfly and this all I've done so far is just taken this out of the bag that this section came in which is the dragon make along part so inside your dragon make along you will have got the most pretty I imagine it's resin but I genuinely couldn't tell you it's two-tone so you've got this glorious almost duck egg blue background with the 3D, let me just shade that from the light a second. Hopefully you can, that's better, you can see the details on it there. Might turn one of these lights off, see if we can see that better. Beautiful carving, no matter how it has been formed, I genuinely don't know. Let me just turn this main light off and we'll see. That's a little bit better. And I've also got a little background to work over today because the white wire on my regular background might not be quite so ace. So how are you all? Hope everything is going great for you. Let me just see if I can catch up with you today. Elvia is in from Arizona and Susan says, pretty, amazing. Thanks for being there with me today, my lovelies. So there we go. If I move things around on my desktop, hopefully I'll be able to see what's happening. So in your magical mystery bead box for March, you will have received a whole bunch of glorious floral springtime inspired goodness lots of gorgeous lutecite drop flowers which i've made loads of earrings with roberta is in hello my darling how are you i hope you're having a beautiful day sweet pea hello from tampa where it's a warm 78 degrees gem here's your requested weather report thank you Teresa. i appreciate that danielle's in hello darling how are you today lots of love uh, trudy is there hi babe levita is in from new jersey joy's uh, joy is in i've been trying to figure out what this is what to make with this well we have an idea for you today obviously nobody's going to make you make the thing that we're looking at today but it's a choice for you plus also if you're not used to working with wire honestly i believe it is achievable sue is in hi sue donna is in hello my lovely how are you today hope all is well 78 degrees would be very very welcome right now it's a bit bleh over here right now but mind it's all good so that's the cab that we're going to work with if you're unfamiliar with the terminology a cab is short for cabochon and generally it means a domed top and a flat back and uh, I have been working with them for about seven or eight years I want to say so this is a design which I genuinely 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 believe you will be able to access if you are not a mm, blah, 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 person, then it's something that you would be able to transfer. But genuinely, how cute is this? It's so, I actually really want you to just reach out and touch the, dra the dragonfly. It's gorgeous, really textural and such beautiful colours too. Uh, Celia is in from Lancashire, just making a dragonfly dream catcher using the nevertheless she... Uh, persevered I want to say ended up having ordered two also doing a necklace fabulous it's a beautiful is it pers persisted nevertheless she persisted it's a gorgeous mix one of my first Jesse James beads interactions was with that mix anyway let me just put my silly face up for a hot second this is me I'm Gem if we've never met before I live in the United Kingdom I'm here with you for Jesse James beads today to talk about the dragonfly beautiful beautiful piece in the monthly mystery bead box 
which is a real mouthful, especially as I want to put more words in there that aren't actually there. So in the mm mm baba, you will have got your dragon make along, and that's what we're going to be working with today. So there are two gauges of specialist white wire. I've worked with a lot of wire in the past, and a lot of the white coloured wire hasn't been too much fun. What I will tell you is that this is the best white wire I've worked with. It is incredibly cool. It's a little bit firm. If you're used to working with raw copper, I love to work with raw copper, then this is quite tough in terms of its rigidity, which is great because it means it's going to last forever and ever and ever. So let's have another look on the board at what we're going to make and I'll check back to see if we have any questions so far. That's what we're going to come up with today. Susan is in from Cleveland, Ohio. Jessica is there. Hi, JJB friends. Hello to you, Jessica, from everyone. Celia says, yes, not wearing glasses. Yeah, my glasses are somewhere, not entirely sure where. I'm okay up to about eight or ten feet, and beyond that, it's all a bit blurry. If you see me driving without my glasses, do make me stop. So that's what we're going to make together today, a completely accessible design, even for the people that aren't fond of wire. Now, on the back, what I've done is I've created a, a little corseting technique to hold everything together. Now, what I've done here is demonstrated a way that you can fix something that you might not think is fixable. So it looks a bit like a Joy Division album cover at the moment, if you're old enough to remember those. Um, but all will become clear as we work on through, because what can happen with this slightly stronger wire is that it can be a bit tricky to get super taut across the back, and you need it taut across the back to hold everything together. OK, I think I've talked enough. Joy Joy says, I love this design, but I've never done wire wrapping. Fear ye not, my lovely. Hopefully this will be something that you can possibly achieve today. Let's hope. So let's just pop this over to the side here. And let's look at what you get in the pack. You've got your cab or your uh, resin. I don't know what it's made out of. I'm just guessing it's resin. It's very pretty, whatever it is. You've got two gauges of wire. Now, when you unspool wire, if you are unfamiliar... Try not to stab your fingers onto the end of the wire because it can make them a little bit sore. Uh, Donna says, Joy Division, lol. Yeah, it's true. It just, it just reminds me of, of that album. <laughs> so what we're going to do is just unwrap one of those ends to begin with, being mindful of our fingertips because we need our fingertips. They're very, very helpful to people making jewellery. I'm just going to unwind that end and we will come on to that in a little while. Pop that up to one side. The other one is slightly heavier. So that's your lighter gauge wire and that's your heavier gauge wire. Exactly what the gauges are, I honestly can't remember. I think I was told at one point what you probably perceive, I think it's probably 18 gauge. However, it is a lot firmer than your regular copper wire. So what I would say is this little kicked bit on the end, we're going to trim that away and discard it. We want our dragonfly pendant to be beautiful and perfect. So this is how I unspool wire, especially good wire like this. I pop one fingertip just up inside the end there and just allow that to circle round to unspool the length that I require. So just doing that under control, you can see that this is a lot firmer than many other wires you may have worked with because they will just simply go <laughs> and unspool themselves all over the shop, which is not what we want really. So if the other end of your wire is slightly, let's call it cantankerous, I'm just going to trim that away as well. Let's make our lives easy. There's plenty of wire to make this piece. So what we're going to do is once we've unspooled the heavier gauge wire is we are going to cut that in half, as close to in half as you can possibly get. So I'm just going to snip down the middle. So we've now got two sides that are approximately the same. Let's just pop those two over to one side for a moment and I'll use this as a background if the wire starts to disappear. So one of the most key aspects when working with wire, especially if you're new to wire, is getting it to do what you want. So let's make it warm first. So I'm going to grip one end of that wire and just draw it thumb and forefinger on either side of that wire to make that as smooth as possible. Pop the first one to one side and then the same with the second half. Now we are going to have plenty of wire left over at the end 
to do whatever you fancy up at the top of the bale. So on this one I made a, a cute little coil hanging down, an open spring type coil. And then on the other side I've just popped inside the bale with a, a small coil. So I'm going to show you some choices when we get there, but we will have plenty of wire to play with. So I'm going to give that a bit of a smooth through until they're both nice and warm and toasty. So let's just pop the bits and bobs out of the way. The first thing we're going to do is build a ladder. Yeah, I know that sounds weird, but that's what we're going to do. So I'd like these to be reasonably straight because it will be helpful to you. Frank Castle the fly is back. I have cacti in this room and Frank lives in the cacti and he does love to come and say hi now and again. Uh, the Make Along kit features 18 and 26 gauge para wire. Thank you so much, my darling. That's really, really helpful. Hi from Anne in California. How are you today, sweetie? I hope the weather is good for you. So we've straightened the heavier gauge wire. We've cut it in half and we've trimmed away any bits that perhaps you don't really want to work with. I'm using the wood just so that we can see a little bit better. Now the lighter gauge, which is 26 gauge, I'm going to find the other end of that, which may be just snuggled away inside and just open that out slightly. Now what we don't want is for this to go off on one. So what I tend to do is trim about an inch and a half from one end. I'm still holding the reel carefully so that it doesn't unspool everywhere. And I'm just going to make a very loose little loop with the inch that I cut off the end, not too tight around that bundle of wire. And I'm just going to do a very, very simple twist. And in this way, I'm just going to control that wire slightly. So it's still going to go a little bit floopy when I release. Look, it's gone a bit floopy, not really a technical word, but never mind. Uh, but what we've done is we've maintained that from going absolutely everywhere. And it should allow us to unspool as we need the wire, just to pull that free as and when we need it. I like my wire to come on spools. Question, when I get some unspooled wire, it tends to boing all over the place. Ideas neater for storage. Okay, so I have seen people storing their wire on the types of poles um, that you hang heavy curtains from. I've seen people use kitchen roll dispenser uh, stands to put spools of wire on, uh, but this would be my preference. I tend to just cut a little off the end and make a small loop and it just controls it. Your other alternative, let me see if I've got a large enough bag. Hang tight guys. Check these out. Beautiful. Jesse James, beautiful dagger beads there. So this bag is perfect. And now I literally never throw these things away. I will always find a use for them. If you unspool one end, and what I, what you could do is remove that little circular form that we just wrapped around the wire, pop that inside the zip bag and just close it up like so. And in that way, you not only protect your wire from the elements because wire is metal and metal will degrade, um, you also control it slightly. So that's a good way to do it. But if you're going to use a bag like so, I would remove the little loop that we added on. Now for expediency, I think I'm just going to cut that away because otherwise we'll be here for 64 years while I try and fathom out how to take it off. So you can slide the spool into the bag. Now it's no guarantee that it's not going to go kafloopy anyway, but you might be able to control it slightly more. And what you can do, open that up slightly and unspool what you need. So I'm going to control the spool take about a foot and a half off. So there's about 18 inches or so unspooled from that little loop of wire. And what we're going to do is put the loop back in that bag with the, uh, it's not a zip lock, but I can't remember what they're called, press seal I want to say. So pop it inside the press seal bag, press that up, and you've controlled the residue of your wire, but you've got plenty to work with. It just keeps things a little bit less messy. So we're in the centre of our two lengths of the heavier gauge wire and this is 18 gauge para wire and we're going to start in the middle and we're going to take around about 8 inches before I wrap it around one of those three times. So I'm going to take one of the heavier gauges of wire in the middle, take it about 8 inches of the finer gauge wire and I'm just going to circle that around one, two, 
three times like so. And what we're going to do is a figure of eight weave. So I'm just going to scooch very, very gently. Now with any colour coated wire, I won't use tools to scooch those up. I will use thumbnails because they're much kinder to coated wire. So once I've got three wraps on the one side, if I just bring this slightly closer up, it will go blurry because of the focal length, but hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. I've wrapped three times quite firmly around the centre of one of those heavier gauge halves. The finer gauge wire has come over the top and down. So I'm going to bring in the second wire now and just pinch them side by side, but not too close. So I'm going to take a measurement here and it's probably around about a quarter of an inch, just over a quarter of an inch that I'm supporting these two wires apart. So the finer gauge wire has gone down off the top of the first wire, down the centre and underneath the second wire. I'm going to pinch the whole assembly together and wrap three times firmly around the upper of those two wires. One, two and three. And then I'm going to draw the wire back in the opposite direction. So it's come over the top of the upper of those two wires, down the centre, and it's coming underneath the lower of those two wires. Now the trick here is to go slowly and steady. Slowly and steady is what's going to make for neat jewellery. So what we're looking for is diagonals between these wrap points. So I'm going to take the tail of the wire and I'm going to try to keep these like train track the same distance apart. Anne says I buy it on the spool and once I unhook the end it goes over. How do I keep it on the spool so it doesn't go kafloopy? Okay, when you have wire on a spool, I buy them on giant great big spools like this, one end should be locked, the other end you can, if your spool is a good kind of usable plastic what I tend to do is just hook the end through there and it stops it from going anywhere so that's how I do it uh, probably don't use your best flush cutters for that but that's an option so I'm going to make diagonal passes between the two train tracks of the heavier gauge wire and I'm going to endeavour to keep those around about a quarter of an inch apart maybe slightly more maybe slightly less and on either side I'm going to wrap three times tightly in a coil fashion so the wire comes down the center diagonally underneath the upper of those two heavier gauge wires before wrapping three times around the upper wire do we have any questions on what we're doing right now so i can address them whilst i move on through so we're making together today which is why i don't have a prepared section what we're going to do is make this together so if you want to join in obviously if you don't want to do that you can look back on the live and make sort of along with the video a little bit later on that's absolutely perfectly up to you so i'm going to go diagonally again if i'm coming over the top of the upper wire it means i need to go underneath the lower wire pinch the whole assembly together to maintain that distance between the two heavier wires wrap three times the wire that is fine it goes down the center moves diagonally and comes up underneath the wire on the upper side hello Gabriella how are you today wrap three times around the upper now as I mentioned uh, I received two of these one to make your example and one to make along with you today so there are no staged pieces today this is being made live on the air right now so we may be here for the hour so I'm going to continue in that same direction until I run out of wire so three times around the lower wire finer gauge wire goes over the top and down the center it's called figure of eight because if you turn these ends up towards the camera you will see this kind of motion in this instance you'll wrap three times around the top flip three times around the bottom flip and so on and so forth <laughs> I've heard the song but I couldn't possibly sing it I have no voice today but uh, yes I, I see what you're getting at Donna <laughs> so again we're trying to keep these two heavier gauge wires the same distance apart as we move through the process and I'm going to continue doing that until we run out of wire so slow and steady is what makes for neat wire jewellery 
if you rush this part of the process what will happen is that you'll get ripples in those train tracks so um it pays just to take your time and hopefully you'll end up with a lovely neat project when we get there Anne is asking if there are any more kits available to buy do have a I believe there's a pinned comment Anne that says the March MMBB is now available on the website shop so I believe so again we're going diagonally between the two train track designs until we run out of wire in this direction that's where we start in the middle if you want to cut the wire rather than working from the spool you absolutely can but what you end up with is an almost ungainly length of wire to work with now you'll see that there is a little variation in the distances between those two heavier strands i'm actually not going to stress about it one of the things that you can do to help you is use a ring clamp to hold those two heavier gauge wires as you work what i would say is when you're working with coated wires you need to be kinder to the wires than you ever would with uh, such things as a silver plated copper or a raw copper so uh, my ideal would just be take your time and we're doing this live now so this is real time and it's supposed to take this much time if you rush it and run through it at light speed i mean good for you if you can do this at light speed then absolutely fantastic but i prefer to take my time and make a slightly neater variation so we got around about an inch and a quarter of wire left so i'm going to finish at this end with three little wraps not on the ceiling and I'm going to trim that away so that the end sits in between those two train tracks of wire what we then need to do is very very gently just tidy that end up and you'll see that I'm proceeding with caution because what I want to happen is for the wire to remain perfect Joy says you make this look so doable maybe even I can do it be kind to yourself Joy it is absolutely worth a try and at the end of the day, wire is actually not the most expensive thing that you can purchase in jewellery making. Um, at the moment, silver sheet's really expensive. So, uh, you know, if it doesn't go according to plan at first time round, what you can do is have another go with another section of wire. It's not the end of the world. So be kind to yourself. What I'm going to do now, because I'm right dominant, is I'm going to flip the design over. You remember we started in the middle with the wire that was connected to the lighter gauge spool Roberta says I've done it but I have a hard time going slow I'm getting better at slowing down but it's really hard I understand what you're saying so I'm flipping everything over so that it's moving in the opposite direction so if you're uh, south poor if you're left dominant you will merely need to invert the design to make your life easy so you would probably have started moving in the opposite direction I possibly should have mentioned that earlier so uh, yeah many apologies to my lefties out there so sorry what we're going to do now is move along towards my dominant side let me just scooch some of those cut ends out of the way so what i want to do is to have a reasonable quantity of this ladder created before we move to the next section of the design it is ideal if you can work connected to the spool of lighter gauge wire because it means that we can make a fancy bale when we get there what I tend to do is take the spool, unspool a few inches extra and then just drop it on my lap out of the way and then hopefully it doesn't get on my nerves too much but undoubtedly it will. So if we look at the size of the thing we're looking to encompass, what I want to do is have enough of this ladder weaving to run from around about let's say 11 o'clock on this oval clock face all the way around to one o'clock. So about a twelfth either side of that twelve o'clock position so what you can do really really low techy is roll very very carefully along and it will give you an idea of how much more you need to weave so i reckon we only need a few more passes a few more diagonals passing between those two heavier gauge wires before we're ready to move to the next section of the demo so three wraps on the one side flip the wire down out of the way 
diagonally past the wire between the two heavier gauges and then wrap three times on the lower. If you're finding this repetitive, it's because we are doing a make-along together. So absolutely everything is being made live with you so that you can see the real time that it takes to make one of these. So we're going to do another one of those, like so, one and two and three. And I think probably when we get to the other side here, we will have got enough to go around from that 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock point on the clock face. I always tend to think of cabs as clock faces. I'm not entirely quite sure why. So it doesn't really matter, but for me, because I started on this side, the upper of the two wires, I'm going to finish on the lower of the two wires. As I mentioned, it doesn't really matter because it's not symmetrical doing it this way. It just feels balanced. So let's have a look at our cab and see how that fits in. So if we start at that one o'clock position and roll it very, very gently all the way around, this is very low tech. You could take a piece of tape, you could take a piece of string and be a little bit more mathematical about it, but you know, it's me, so we're winging it. What I want to do now is take a last opportunity just to tidy this up and if I can just get those little wraps a little bit neater but using my fingernails to make sure that they stay as neat and tidy as possible. So the next thing we're going to do is to find an object which is reasonably similar in size to the lower segment of our cab. Now it's quite large, I guess it's 30 by 40, hold on. It's an inch and a half tall, so it's quite a large piece. What I would probably do is use a mandrel. If you don't have a mandrel, you could use something like a torch. Again, be respectful of your wire because we don't want to dink it and nick any of the surface. So I'm going to lay whatever round form it is that's around about the same. Doesn't need to be precisely, bit bigger, bit smaller, doesn't really matter. I'm going to lay that in the centre of that ladder that we made and just start very carefully forming a round shape down at the bottom. Now I hear you say your cab is oval, your shape is round, it's fine, we only need that little roundy bit down at the base. So it looks a bit like a garden arbour at the moment and that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to pick up the bag with the lighter gauge wire because I need that up at the top now. I just need to clear the desk of some detritus before I'm going to slide that beautiful dragonfly into the weaving. Now it's going to sit between those two heavier gauge wires and what I'm going to do is push it down into the lighter gauge wire and then start pulling the heavier gauge wire over the front very very gently so that it sits inside the very outer margin of the cab itself. If I flip the design over it will be easier to see on a plain background. So I'm very very gently pushing so that you can see the heavier white line is now sitting inside the oval blue as you look at it and that means our design is working. If I flip it on its side you can see that the little ladder is bending into a little bit of a domed shape to accommodate the outside edges of the cabochon design. I've just seen that if you put light behind this it's really really beautiful and glowy. So that's what we're looking to do now. Are you all with me so far? I hope that this is making sense. This is a really cool technique that you can use with any and all cabochons. You can use it with coin beads. If you're using it with deep coin beads, you simply need to hold those two wires further apart. So it looks perfect with the white wire. What I'm going to do is very, very gently coerce a little bit of warmth and just start forming an angle up at the top and what I've done is I've just pulled that slightly forwards, very, very gently. I'm going to do the same on the other side, very, very gently, just pulling that ever so slightly forward so it's out of the way for a moment. I'm going to flip the design over again, which is a pest when you've got your bag of wire connected, but it's so worth it. Flip, 
and then we're going to do the same on the back of the design so pull those wires pull those wires so that they're sitting inside the oval uh, Jess says this is great very clear instructions thank you thank you so much that's really lovely feedback i truly appreciate it because i feel sometimes like i go on and on and on and you're sick of hearing my voice um but i do want you to be able to completely follow every aspect so what i'm going to do again in, i'm not going to pull them forwards this time i'm going to keep them flat to the back of the cab but I am going to do that little bit of a shape so that they all start to bundle up at the top like so. I just push that in. It's not completely symmetrical, but you know what? I'm not overly worried. If you want to make that a bit more symmetrical, you absolutely can. So I've got two central wires at the back which are going up in a straight line. This is, if I show you in its proper orientation, at the 12 o'clock position. You want your cab to hang neatly, so do try and get that centralised. So my two central wires on the rear are coming up at the 12 o'clock position. If I flip the design over again, like so, now that we've got everything a little bit neater, we can draw those two front wires flatter again and just allow them to sit down over the surface of the cab and meet with those two central wires at the back. Now I've got the front wires wider than the back wires if you also the other way around it doesn't matter as long as they're all meeting together and they meet with your personal need for neatness so they could all bundle in a big squishy four of them all bundled up together or you could get two sitting slightly outside the other two whichever way you want to play it now the reason i left my wire connected over here on the one side um it just makes a much neater design and if you're using one long length of wire with finer gauge wire it really pays because there are fewer points that things can come undone which is really important in wire jewellery so I'm just going to draw the tail of the wire that's still attached to that little bag let me just pop that one over there for a second before I knock it flying I'll need that in a second I'm going to flip the design over and I'm going to start bringing the finer gauge wire up the very centre so we've got four strands of heavier gauge wire. If I just push them out slightly, push them out slightly, and then push the two inner ones out slightly, but a bit further up. It's a bit, looks a bit like a pineapple now, but you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to draw the tail of wire that's connected down the center of absolutely everything. Now, if you cut your wire here, don't worry, simply wind on three times around one of those inner two wires or just a wire that's easy for you to access don't stress too much about following the tutorial exactly it's more about making it accessible to people who maybe haven't tried wire work before or for whom this is a new technique today and says love your instructions very clear and easy to follow when using the wire on the spool is there a way to keep it from going floopy um on the spool itself just the weight of the spool really I think uh, Donna says no 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 we love the way you carry on I know that sounds like a left-handed compliment <laughs> but I learned so much watching you and you're a fun person you're such a love thank you ever so much Teresa you're an absolute diamond thank you my lovely I really really appreciate your kindness so I'm going to bring the wire that's got the bag over here on the right and I'm going to draw that around one of those central wires and I'm just going to wrap it three times you may lose purchase on the cab itself for a moment but don't worry you can always slide that back in so what i'm doing here by wrapping three times around one of those central wires is i'm locking the design closed on one side now we're going to follow the same process that we followed making the surround for the cab so we're going to do a figure of eight weave but this time we're using the two innermost wires. Let me just open these outer ones out a bit more so it's easier for you to identify what's happening. So I've wrapped three times around the uppermost of the two inner wires and the finer gauge has come over the top and down the center. So I'm going to tie those two really neatly and really firmly together by doing an up close and personal figure of eight weave really, really tightly. And I'm going to do that a couple of times because it holds the design together. I can't see over my camera, I must have moved the position. I'm bobbing around 
like a cat looking out the window at the birds. So another three times on the upper of the two, down the centre, and then three times on the lower of the two. Now we've locked the back wires very strongly into position. So what we're going to do now is flip over to the front. You can see we've tied everything together super neatly. We don't even really need to put that carseting, a corseting even, on the back. I don't know what carseting is. Flip to the other side, catch the camera, what's new? So what we need to do now is bring the two outer wires together with the two inner wires. Now we've already tightened up those two inner wires super, super neatly. So what we're going to do, I'm going to teach you a method of bail making. If you want to go in zigzags like this, which is like a skipping design, you absolutely can. But I'm going to teach you something different today because I really like how it looks. So as it stands at the moment, I have wrapped three times around the upper of the two inner wires. What I'm going to do now is draw one time around the upper of the middle and then the upper most wire, bundling those two wires together before drawing the wire up through the centre, so underneath. If we call this one, two, three and four, this is how I teach in my in-person classes. So I've wrapped the wire one time around one and two and I'm drawing the tail up between two and three pulling that really nice and neat and tidy. Again, I'm not using tools because we're using beautiful wire. Sandy says, gorgeous, thank you so much. What I'm going to do now is wrap three times around number two. So again, you may need to unspool a little bit more wire, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that just yet until the bag you know, gets its own slot on the show. That's the second time and a third time. Bring the wire up between two and three, scooch everything neatly into place. So now I'm going to wrap three times around number three. Remember, one, two, three, four. Can you see everything with the white wire on the uh, wooden background? So because we're doing a figure of eight weave in the centre, my wire has come from underneath number two, so it's going over number three. Wrap three times around just number three. One and two and three up between two and three and bring number four into play for the first time so i'm going to wrap once now around three and four before coming up between two and three so dead center bring the tail of wire up and then wrap three times you've guessed it around number three so that's one and two and three times around number three so we've come underneath number three so we need to come up the center and wrap three times around number two so when we are moving around between two and three we're always doing that figure of eight weave but when we're moving between collectively one and two or three and four we're wrapping two wires together as opposed to wrapping a figure of eight around them. So I will take a photograph of this after the live has finished and you'll be able to see what it looks like in its finished glory, she says. <laughs> but I will just show you, now this is nice and solid, I can pop that down for a second. It's You have to kind of keep a hold of it for half an hour or so and that can be a little bit tiring. Um, but once you get to this stage, you can absolutely put it down and go and get a brew if you want to. For the design I made prior to the show, I did a different weave. Both will effectively put four strands of wire side by side and keep them secure. So what I'm looking at here is just two around number four, figure of eight, so opposing uh, directions, three around number three, three around number two, three around number one. And you can see that these are going in opposite directions. There's no joins between them. Let me bring that closer up for a second. It might go blurry. Let me just refocus that, actually. I can always refocus it again later. And I'll show you the other one while we're at it. So for this one, every wire worker's nightmare, look at my fingertips on your, sh on your screen. Eek. You can see how that weave has made up. Let me bring you the one we're doing right now to show you the difference. 
So it's three around one of the inners and then one around both, three around one of the inners before you switch to the opposite bundle. So let me pop that back down and refocus the camera. Cool. Wow, that looks all squishy. Let's find out if we can see that again. There we go. So you've got choices when it comes to whatever weave you want to do. I love this weave. It's beautiful. And if you look at it from the back, it looks identical. Not all weaves look the same on one side as they do on the other. So where we are at now, we have wrapped three times around number two and then once around number one. So that means the next thing we need to do is wrap three times around number two. Now, for the sake of expediency, what I am going to do is just weave the front half of our bale and I'm going to leave the back half of the bale without weaving. That means I can move on slightly more quickly to the next stage of our tutorial today. But you can absolutely continue weaving to around about, I would say probably an inch to an inch and a quarter full of weaving. My ruler is actually trying to get on screen right now. <laughs> so if you were to do repeating weave, whichever your choice might be, for about an inch to an inch and a quarter before you cut away the finer gauge wire and then make a bale, in that fashion you'll have weaving front and back. I doubt that you would wear this pendant in this orientation unless you're a massive Joy Division fan. However, if you have the weaving continuously all the way for about an inch to an inch and a quarter, you have the option to do so. If you do not weave on the back, I mean, sure, you can wear that if you want to, but that's what it looks like. You have the, the, the naked heavier gauge wires on, on the back side there. So I'm going to continue weaving probably another set, but you could continue as long as you wanted to. So I've come around three times on number two wire, drawing the wire up between. That means I need to go three times around the number three wire, two and a third time. Just going to stab the camera with the wire there. It's always fun. And then what I'm going to do is go three times around three and four before returning to three wraps around number three. So I'm trying to keep the wire work as still as possible whilst it's being woven. Take the tail down and that's where I'm going to truncate it. Now you could continue much further along if you wanted to or do you want me to do a bit more? Do you want to watch a bit more of that weaving? Just while I wait for you to answer, I'll do another one on the other side. So I'm just going to continue figure of eight. So I'm swapping. I'll do another one here. Three times around number two. I'm happy to complete the design fully woven if you prefer. If you're making along and that's what you want to do, then by all means. But the basic configuration is that you're figure of eight weaving the central wires and then adding a single wrap out to those outer wires just to hold everything together so it's absolutely up to you more weaving says Anne okay you are on my chick thank you very much so again the inner two is a basic figure of eight weave so we're opposing directions what I might do is grab a notebook or a, a note in a second and show you what it looks like end on with a very very awful drawing of what I mean. Two and three. Let me just grab a piece of note. Here we go. So with your figure of eight weaving, if you're looking at the very end of the wires, end on, the wires sit side by side, they're open, as they were at the very beginning when we did the edges of our pendant. But if they're closer together, then you obviously you wouldn't be able to see it if I draw them completely side by side. So you would wrap three times around one side and then you'd switch direction before wrapping three times around the other side before switching direction and so on and so on. So that's why it's called a figure of eight weave because it looks a little bit like the world's worst eight. So let's just put that back out of the way and carry on with a little bit more weaving. Uh, love Zoe, oh, I love your name, that's beautiful. Uh, the, I love this, JJB should do that every month, I'm something to do along. Hi Gem, oh lovely, thank you so much, I'm glad you're enjoying it 
and uh, yeah I think that's a great idea too so a figure of eight weave again we're going to wrap three times around number two and then moving in the same direction once around two and one pull that nice and tight and again I will stress that because we're working with a coated wire I'm not using the tools anywhere near as much as I normally would I'm just using thumb and forefinger to scooch those wires up so we're now switching from a figure of eight design three times on number two switch direction to three times now on number three same direction once around both three and four returning to three times in the same direction around number three now i have seen a lot of people um in classes on occasion putting a lot of stress into the wire further away now if i were to let's just see if i can replicate what i mean if i'm pulling the wire this way and i'm not supporting the frame that we're working on what can happen is the whole thing will bend forwards whilst you can straighten it it's much better to support what you're working on as close as possible to the point of any force you're creating so i'm pulling here that's creating force so we want to keep our frame wires these four side by side wires as neat as possible so go up between two and three Pull the wire over nice and firmly and then changing directions in that figure of eight design once twice three times moving in the same direction so wire comes up as if you were going to continue spiraling around number two scooch the wires up nice and tightly and then once around both one and two you are going to be sick of the sound of my voice and the sound of me counting one ah 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 Ooh, oh I've missed a bit now that is something that does happen so I'm glad that that's happened what I did is I pulled the wire back in the direction that I was just taking the wire from now it's put a tiny bit of a kink in my wire but if you're cautious you can simply undo it a step little bit of love and effort you'll get that to sit back down where you initially wanted it to go so there's my third wrap around number two so because we're switching between the figure of eight weave on those central two wires again i'm now going to go three times around number three uh, pamela says received mine in monthly kit gorgeous design great directions thank you so much pamela that's really sweet of you to say i've always been afraid of trying this type of wire wrapping or weaving well hopefully this will give you just a little bit of confidence to try it and I always say that wire isn't enormously expensive unless you're working in platinum um, but maybe don't to begin with maybe learn your art in copper or steel and then take it forwards to precious metals when you feel confident so we've got around about an inch of wire weaving I'm going to do one more set and again it's because I started if we put this in its proper orientation my first little mountain of weaves is over on the left so I feel like I want to finish on the right there's no rhyme nor reason other than that's just what I want to do so for the last time a figure of eight switcheroo and then I'm going to wrap three times around number three trying to keep it still so you can follow if you've all got seasickness I'm terribly sorry three around number three same direction one around three and four returning in the same direction to number three before finishing off with three little wraps if you are making along with me live now i hope that that's enough time to have at least a little bit of weaving practice with me this is the front of our design so i'm going to flip over to the back pull the wire nice and firmly again supporting the section that we're working with taking my flush cutters and looking very 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 hard before trimming away the finer gauge wire many a project has been ruined you wouldn't be the first you wouldn't be the last so always look hard before you choose which wire to trim and again this is the only time i'll use a tool on this wire just to tuck that end in between those two central uprights so if we have a look at the project we've done so far that's actually pretty secure in there and the reason it's secure in there is because we've applied tension up at the top drawing all of these wires together firmly we also did our initial diagonal weave 
far enough apart to allow the edges of our cabochon design to fit into that little hammock, I guess, that we made for it. Now, what I would normally say here is take your flat pliers and hold above the neck and push forwards with the bit we're going to make into a bale. Well, today I'm going to do that with my thumb and I'm just going to push that forwards like so. So it's coming forwards at 90 degrees. Now, again, if you treat your wire well, it will respond and will work well for you. So I'm just going to push some heat into this woven section. Now, normally I'd be saying, draw your finger and thumb across it like so. Just draw it front and back like that. Um, which I'm not going to do now because you can't really do that successfully on woven sections. So I'm just going to press that between my thumb and forefinger and imbue a little bit of my body heat into the design. So that's now a little bit more fluid. If you do want to proceed extraordinarily cautiously with bail makers, you can. But what I'm going to do is use a pen. This has got a rubber section down here where you hold it, which is super comfy, but that also benefits me right now because it means I can draw those four tails, those four woven tails around and create a bale form. Now I say between an inch and an inch and a quarter because it leaves a really nice amount of wire to create a big fat bale that you can then use to put uh, any threading material through really. Or I've got a couple of chains which have got really fat clasps on them and if you make a teeny tiny bale you can't use those kind of chains on them. So hopefully you are still with me and everything is going according to plan. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to elect my outer wires to just very very gently pull them out to the sides and I'm going to do something pretty with those. Those are going to be my prettifying wires. The two inner wires are going to be the ones that hold the project together. Now I've seen a lot of people in the industry just simply cutting the wire here and hoping that not too much upward pressure occurs and that their pendants won't simply fall off. That is not good enough, not good enough. So what I'm going to do is take the two inner wires and I'm going to truncate them to ideally twice the length of the cab, but this is what we're working with. Just trim that section away. I've lost my voice. Loving the class, when the class and the design, says Arlene. Thank you ever so much. That's really kind of you. So we've got about two and three quarter inches of wire sitting down over the rear of the cab now. If you have a look at the front of the cab, and if I can just turn that on its side slightly, you can see that there are gaps because those four wires were brought together in such a way that there are gaps in the design and that is on purpose. So this is trickier to show you than it is to do. You know, we just made that lovely bale shape. I'm just going to open that out ever so slightly and really super warm the inner two strands of wire. What I want to do is find a home in between the lower parts where those four wires first came together. So I can see there's a gap right here between the outermost and the second wire. So I'm going to take the shorter wire from this side. If I show you that sideways, I'm just going to bend that up. That looks ugly. Don't worry, we're going to fix it. I'm going to pop that through the gap. Just hit the camera, Never mind, eh? And pull that through. I'm not going to close that completely because I want to get the other wire on the other side. So this is the second of the innermost wires and I want to find a hole for it in the top section of our pendant. So warm, 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 and then find a gap and push that through. So then I'm going to reclose that lovely bale shape that we made. I've slightly massacred that. So you might want to do that on the actual form that you used, a rubber form. That would be far smarter just to tighten that back up and leave you with a nice bale shape. So I take the two pretty wires out to the side for a second. You can see the two inner wires have come through and all we want to do is to draw that around one of these neck wires up at the top. So I'm going to push that one over the back and push that one over the back. Now, if you're incredibly cautious, you can use tools to just get those to sit symmetrically or you can push them through so that they're a little bit more even as you prefer. Now, all I'm going to do here is draw the wire down 
draw the wire down. So those were the two inner wires and what they've done is they've sealed our uh, bale up at the top. So what I tend to do is just cut them quite short and put a small coil on them which I'm going to tuck inside the outer wires here. So I'm going to take those two probably around about three quarters of an inch so I could have cut them a bit shorter and made it slightly easier to get those through however I want you to see that it's not impossible if you wanted to have four pretty wires you absolutely can put long tails of wire through those gaps. So there is a risk when using your plain metal round nose pliers that you may mark the wire slightly. I'm not overly going to worry about it, I'm simply going to make a coil as delicately as I can. So you can see I've started that coil shape and then what I'm going to do is continue the coil and post it just underneath so that it sits underneath that section of wire. Let me just bring that up slightly. You can see that that has come all the way around the neckline of the pendant. And I'm just tucking the tail underneath. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. You can use tool dip. You can use nylon coated or rubber coated tools if you prefer. Or a very, very delicate hand. I am not known for having delicate hands. It is not one of my special skill sets. So I've started the coil first of all with the round nose pliers and then I switch over to the flat facing pliers. Once the coil gets nice and coil shaped you might need to lift that wire slightly. I'm just going to post the coil underneath that wire like so so that it sits underneath and it's not going to catch on anything. If I flip the design back over what you may need to do on occasion is just re-straighten your bale. You could, if you're working without um, a camera and people watching, you could simply leave the bale making device of your choice whoops, in position. So what I'm going to do now is show you two options for what to do with your prettying wires. You could, if you wanted cleaner lines, simply cut them away after locking them around one of these frames. What I'm going to do show you how to make a tendril and how to make a coil neatly. So the longer of my, uh, the longer of the two prettying wires I'm going to leave to make a long tendril and the shorter one I'm going to cut that even shorter maybe to around about two inches. So I'm going to truncate that one to about two inches flipping the design over I'm going to put a coil down on the back of the design. So again heat will help being gentle with your tools will help. Even using special tools which are coated to deal with coloured wire. But as this is going on the back, I'm not actually going to freak out too much. So slowly makes neater coils. And also very, very delicately opening and closing the pliers. You can see I haven't marked the wire. <sighs> she says, <laughs> hoping that she doesn't. I'm just going to draw that coil all the way to the centre back of the design and just push that into the middle of the back of the bale. Let me just straighten that up slightly. So that's how I'm going to finish off the plain side of my design. And if we don't put the zigzaggy section on, that's actually completely wearable as a plain... If you're feeling a plain blue design, you go for it. This other longer wire, I'm going to draw all the way around that bale twice because it gives a really nice neat finish. You could continue if you wanted to underneath those two sections where we drew the whole design together. I'm just going to tighten that up slightly. I'll show you what I mean. So draw that all the way around one more time and just get that to fit inside. Now you could if you wanted to which is what I would be tempted to do if I was making this for myself, is just put a coil over this section here. But I've promised to show you how to make a tendril. So again, you could simply copy what we did on the back, make a nice neat coil for about an inch and three quarters and pop it over the surface. That would look really beautiful. But as an alternative to that, I promised to show you how to make the tendril. So that is what we will do. Well, there goes the camera again. I'm going to take number two on my multi-step bale makers. I'm going to very, very gently make a spring or a gizmo style coil. Now gentleness again on a design like this 
in theory there should be fewer tool marks. One thing I will say is when you're working with this wire, what you have outside of the core is a silver colour and then you have the final colour on top. So what will happen if you're a bit brutal is you'll get flashes of silver showing through. Now I'm not actually adverse to that, I kind of like that in my designs, but if you don't it may be better to simply trim away or put a coil on the surface. So what I'm going to do is just open that up like so. Maybe straighten that by hand and you've got a little tendril coming off on that side. So there's a couple of choices for you with your, uh, let me get the paperwork back. Let's have one here and one here, shall we? There we go. So your dragon make along, Mr. G, for your magical mystery bead box for March from Jesse James Beads. There you have your instructions on how to make the cabochon into a wearable pendant. So here's my silly face again. I'm still here, it's still me. Who else's hands would it be? I mean, honestly, they're pretty rough, to be fair. I hope you've enjoyed the class. I know that I have really enjoyed it. I love all things dragons. Technically, it's a dragonfly. I realise that. I totally understand. But I have really enjoyed my time with you today and my time spent on the MMBB project. I hope that we can do this again very soon. I'm going to sign off. If there are any questions, uh, give me a shout Tag me in the comments below the video and I will endeavour to come back to you. Um, until next time, I guess. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.